Gordon's life was a disaster beyond the grasp of any biographer. Only one thing about Gordon interested me. How the disaster of Gordon's life was reflected in Gordon's thought, and how the disaster of Gordon's thought was reflected in his life. As thinkers, we are entirely overrated. We occupy most of the time we spend thinking, or attempting to think, overrating ourselves as thinking beings. Most thought is an attempt to exaggerate the extent to which we can think at all. Three weeks after Gordon's co-worker was found dehydrated and still, two more co-workers were discovered in a similar condition. They were both sitting in their respective offices. One had not been seen since Monday and was discovered on Thursday, sitting on his swivel chair facing the computer. Gordon lingered on and prolonged the will to dismissal in those he encountered so that it became unbearable. Assimilate or dismiss, Gordon made both impossible. It was his art, and his alone so far as I knew. It was the art of unbearable ambiguity. The university was setting up its own psychiatric ward to care for employees on site. This became the typical response of the university sector. Universities were everywhere setting up psychiatric wards, I discovered. My own institution was particularly proud of its own. Not only was it the first to set up such a ward, it could also boast the most impressive ratio between diminished employees and beds. We had more beds than we needed, and so were always ready whereas other institutions often had more immobile and desiccated employees than beds. Gordon was sick, but he was also a sickness. Gordon was the manifestation of a sickness from which a sickness of his own, the sickness of Gordon, would spread. The more I knew Gordon, the more I became sick with Gordon. Our doctors became our educators, our educators became our researchers, and our researchers became our doctors. They will not tell us that we are dying. They will not even allow us to tell ourselves that we are dying. At its best, which is when education is at its worst, educators know their patients so well that they understand exactly Gordon underlined, in which of its limbs and body parts the world is weakest. These weakest parts, being our most tender parts, are manipulated with the greatest care. It is towards the weakest limbs that our best educators are most gentle, I heard Gordon say, as he underlined that text.